transition edge sensors based microcalorimeters. Distinguish the two parts in the detector. One is generating the excitation and measuring it. Microcalorimeters is constituted by a bulk crystal in which the radiation is coming and is absorbed. The uh, amount of temperature change in this crystal, delta T, is equal to the incoming energy divided by the heat capacitance of, of the systems. Polarometer is a purely thermal device. The temperature rises given by one of the T's three. What I need now is just to read out this system by a thermometer, which is provided by the transition edge sensor. Temperature causes scattering and, and breaks up the Cooper pair. If you have a, a thermal energy, which is um, large compared to this binding energy of the Cooper pair, then the Cooper pair can uh, be broken up. We cool um, the sample down. As we go through TC, a new um, state of matter, right? It's not a metal, it's not an insulator. Uh, there is a phase transition. So what we need is a very sharp transition in, in the sense that the thermometer will make a big jump uh, when the, uh, for a, a, even a smaller uh, amount of changing in the temperature. It means that the parameter which is of paramount importance here is this one, which gives you the variation of the resistance with respect to the temperature. Energy resolution we can obtain from these uh, detectors. Delta A, which is the capability of the system to discriminate between two lying energy which coming from radiation. And this is proportional to the square root of the thermal energy of the system to its heat capacitance and to this parameter. Interestingly, transition edge sensors um, they're now being, large uh, imaging arrays are being made with these devices and their multiplexing is achieved using uh, squids, very complicated and large squid multiplexing circuits are built. So you can see the whole of the technology here, both the sensor itself but also then the, uh, the multiplex and readout electronics, it's all done in superconductors. The power couples into a waveguide which defines the, the band pass of the RF side of the system. Uh, this is transformed using a device known as, uh, known as Finline into a microstrip circuit. The microstrip circuit uh, can be routed onto a thermally isolated island on which the TES is fashioned, terminate with the characteristic resistance of the microstrip, and RF power couples into power on in the TES. And this is how we measure RF power. The resistance increases, the current flowing through the input coil of the squid will be reduced. Okay, so what we have here is uh, readout electronics for squids. Uh, squids are uh, essentially very sensitive magnetometers which can be used as current meters and they're a very sensitive way of reading out detectors with low noise. So this is room temperature electronics for running these squids and reading out the data. So SIS mixers are uh, extraordinary uh, devices uh, but they have the disadvantage that they can't work above a frequency of about 700 gigahertz. But in actual fact this is only um, about halfway across the terahertz uh, frequency range. So it means that by use it, that using uh, superducting tunnel junctions we still uh, don't get access to a considerable amount of astrophysics that we would like to. So how do we um, develop a detector, how do we make detectors which uh, operate at frequencies above the energy gap of a superconductor?